Hello and welcome. Thanks for popping into my channel. If you are new here, please like and subscribe for me. If you find this content helpful, smash that notification bell so that you don't miss out on the next video. Comment below with anything that you need help with or topics you'd like me to cover and check out my website consultingninja.tech. With that out of the way, let's get right to it. We are going to be looking at Svelte Stores. If you're not familiar with any of the technologies that I'm using here, Vite or Svelte, feel free to check out the links in the description of this video for some beginner videos on those topics. I also will link to some of the other videos that I've done on Svelte where I cover bindings and reactivity. So let's get to it. I'm not going to code along, but I, I did set up an example of each kind of store. Now there's three kinds of stores. There's a writable store, there's a readable store, and there's a derived store. Now these are pretty basic examples of each, but this will get you going in the right direction and at least give you a general understanding of how to use these. So I took the Skeleton Svelte app and I just made some small modifications to it. The first modification is that I created three stores, one for each kind of store, a write store, this is what that looks like. You import writable and then you set it up like this. So const count and I just replaced the count example here with a store instead of being a local piece of state. So const count is assigned writable and you don't have to do any of this. I'm going to point that out right away. We could just leave all of this out and initialize our writable like this. This is perfectly fine, this will work. This will allow you to use the value out just like before. This will allow you to update the value whenever you want. We're initializing it here to zero. What all of this other stuff is, you can pass in optionally this function and this function will run the very first time that the store is initialized. So when one component subscribes to this writable store, this code that you put inside of this function will run. So here we could just console.log, hey, there's a subscriber to this store now. But if you pass it this function, you then have to give it a cleanup function. So you have to pass it a second function on the return to run when the last subscriber is uh, has left the building. So sad day, all the subscribers are gone. <laughs> so that's what a writable store looks like. Now, inside of app, here's how we could use that. Here I have the write store. I've called it write store because it's a writable store. And I've actually combined it here with a reactive statement. So I'm pulling in the write store and to, in order to access just plain old access the value out of that store, you just put a dollar sign in front of it like that. And I, I set up this little reactive statement and just I'm doubling the value of count. And then we're displaying that in the top here. Inside of counter, I also have the right store imported here. And what I'm doing here is I have a button that is displaying the count along with some text using the same syntax, dollar sign right store in order to get that value. And then here, because it's a writable store, we have access to this update method. So I just created this little function that when you click the on click uh, for the button, it runs write store.update, which is very similar to how you would update state in React. This is the previous value, and then so it takes the previous value plus whatever, and then returns that and sets the, sets the state to now contain that updated value. Pretty straightforward. So let's go ahead and give that a, a go. And if I increase the count here off that button, you can see it updates in our doubled app and it also updates in our component number two. So it's, it up, updates all across anywhere that is subscribed to it and it does it seamlessly. I also have the same code. I have the writable imported into component two just so that you guys can see that when I, up, when I click the button there, it updates the value seamlessly across all of the components that are subscribed to that store. Pretty cool, pretty straightforward, good stuff, right? This is very reminiscent of Recoil. If you're not, if you're familiar with Recoil JS, uh, I've been wanting to do a video on that for a while. I just haven't got around to it. So stay tuned for that if you have never heard of Recoil. It's a state management 
wrapper that you can put around your app that essentially sits above the whole application. It allows you to do this same sort of stuff. Everywhere that's importing the uh, writable store, updates whenever you update any of them, uh, it's very helpful stuff. Looking at the next kind of store, a readable, I took the example from the documentation and it just brought it a little bit further. Here we're importing readable, and then I, I made sure to comment this so that you guys are aware of this right away, that this const time, this cannot be set from anywhere outside of this function. So that's what makes this a readable. It's essentially a read-only piece of, of state. And it's like, well, why would you want to do that? In the documentation that they're giving, they gave this you know time. I wanted to show you guys what that would look like with actually doing something. So their example just creates a new date and then plops it into an interval, which is like, okay, well, you wouldn't probably want, wouldn't need to do that in real life, but this is something you would need to do. What if you wanted to format it a certain way? So I'm gonna go ahead and come to component two and I'm going to uncomment this out, uncomment out the read store. And you can see that accessing the value is the same way I'm importing read store just like a writable and then just accessing the value with dollar sign read store and then here we can see the result of that this is not how a date would typically look but I formatted it we're getting the formatted version so this is a, a better example of how you might actually use a read only store in your application if you needed to do something with that do some sort of manipulation on that value before you send it off to your components. A read-only store would be a great way to do that, as demonstrated here. And then the interval is just set up to be updating the time and spitting it back to us. So pretty cool. I like it, right? It's good stuff as well. So that is writable and readable. Now the last store type that I want to show you guys today is called derived. And as you guessed, this one is derived just like in Recoil.js, if you're familiar with what a selector is, it derives its value from other pieces of state. So a derived looks like this. I have a, de a derived store here. So you import derived from the Svelte store, just like you fire up a const with the readable and writable, it's the same thing for derived. The difference is this, derived is going to be getting its value based off of at least one, but possibly more stores. We import those stores that we're gonna use in that derived. And then if you're going to do one, you would just do like this. You just have the single store. If you're gonna do multiple, then you do like I had it like this, where you have an array and each element in the array is a, is a store that you're going to do something with to derive the value of this one. And then the next thing is an aggregate function. So this is just an anonymous function, or you could, it doesn't have to be anonymous, but a, a function that takes the values from those stores and then does something with them. Now in this example, it's pretty simple. All I'm doing is taking the count, making sure it's a string and then slapping it onto time. And then we're exporting that, I called it derivable. Uh, we're exporting that store out. So inside of component two, I'll go in here and I'll uncomment these out. This line is just uh, importing that derived store. And then here is that derived value in the JSX there. And I'll give that a save. In the uh, development version here, you can see that we now have the counter. Though That's coming from that writable store and that's flowing through every component that's using it. If I hit one, it, it updates everywhere. Here we have the readable. And then the last one here, uh, it looks the same except for we have the count added on there and that's that derived. So the derived is watching both of those other stores. When one of them updates, then it updates itself. So pretty cool how watching those come together, how that works. So you can see the time is continuously updating and then anytime I hit the button as well, it also updates the, uh, the count there on the derivable. Well, derivable is what I call it. Derived is the store name. So that's really cool, really powerful stuff. Hopefully you guys have found this video helpful. I'm gonna show you one more thing before we go, and that is inside of your stores or inside of your script, if you have a store 
either a writable or readable or derived that you only want to get the value from once. Now, there's all kinds of use cases for this. Maybe in a, a writable, when the first subscriber hits, you need to check some value, but you only need to check it once from another store. You can import from Svelte store this git. And what this does is just one time it will subscribe to a store, pull the value out, and then immediately unsubscribe. So if you needed to one time get the value from another store and do something with it, maybe when, like I said, maybe when this piece of state, this store first fires up or gets its first subscriber, you need to check something really quick, uh, but you're only needing to check it once, that's a good option. So your code's not constantly re-rendering is using this git. You just do, you know, const value equals git, and then inside here you'd put whatever your store is. Uh, and then you'd have to import it as well, obviously. And then it will subscribe, get the value, and then unsubscribe right away. All right, so there we have uh, readables, we have writables, and we have derived stores. I hope that you guys have found this video helpful. If you did, don't forget to give me that thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Comment below, and that would really help out the channel. As always, you guys have a great day.